Today is the day. Today is the day when you can pick up the audiobook for the wisdom of your heart. I'm so excited about this, and to celebrate, we're going to have a short bonus podcast episode. I've got a quick story to tell you. Hey, friends, I'm Mark Allen Shelsky, and this is The Apprenticeship Way, a podcast about learning how to live life with Jesus. This is episode 17 Emotional Growth is Not a Niche. I was sitting across the small desk from the acquisitions editor of a Christian publishing house. I just pitched in the idea I had for this potential book about the vital role of emotions in our spiritual life. Sound familiar? (laughs) This guy had the ability to get my book published and pay me for it. That was a crazy moment. My insecurities were on full alert. I desperately wanted to please this guy. My emotions were all over the place and I was not handling them well. I get the irony. Now, the editor liked the idea. He said it was something people needed to hear. I agreed. But he said there was just one thing that needed to change. Just one thing. He told me I needed to refocus my book as a book for men. It could be a men's ministry book. Think of it. Christian men really need to hear this, he said. But they're not going to read it like this. Not the way you have it here. I need more... Sports stories, maybe some outdoorsy stories, maybe some military illustrations. Then it would be right on track. Could I make those changes? My heart fell. I wanted this guy's approval so much. I wanted to get this book out into the world, but I knew in my gut that what he wanted was not the right direction for me. Emotional wellness, emotional discipleship, emotional maturity, all the stuff like learning how to sit with our emotions, learning how to understand them, even learning how to hear God in them. This is not a niche. It's not a demographic. It's not a market segment. Our culture often thinks about emotions as being, you know, women's business. Women can be emotional, and clearly they need guidance about how to handle their emotions, but not men. We have such weird gendered ideas about emotions. In our culture, for example, men are many times only allowed to express their emotional energy as anger. But women? No way. When women get angry in public, they get called mean names. On the other hand, women are allowed to express their emotional energy as sadness, but men definitely aren't. A man who's sad for too long is considered to be a broken man. See, these weird standards, they they mean that we talk about emotions in gendered terms. And if you go to a bookstore, especially Christian bookstores, there will be books for men about dealing with their emotions in manly ways, and there will be books for women about dealing with their emotions in feminine ways. Come on! That's just a silly game. Chopping up our emotions into masculine-approved and feminine-approved emotions, that damages all of us. Emotions are not a niche. Every human person experiences the world through the filter of their emotional response system. Every single one! Every person who wants to grow has to learn how to be present to their emotions in a healthy way. Every spiritual person will at some point or other come to realize what Pete Scazzaro says is true. It is impossible to grow spiritually if we aren't growing emotionally. Learning how to listen to our emotions is not a luxury just for those people who have the time, or for people with a certain personality or temperament or gender. Learning how to hear and understand our emotions is crucial for all of us. We experience and relate to our entire life through the filter of our emotional response system. Men, women, kids, everybody. People who think they're more rational, people who think they're more emotional, our brains all work in the same system. Everything we see, do, hear, perceive we experience through our emotional response system. That means that attending to our emotional life, attending to this part of our inner life, applies to everyone. To me, to you, everyone else. So when I was sitting in that meeting, across from that editor that I was desperate to please, I wanted to nod my head, I wanted to agree with his opinion, and maybe he'd publish my book and pay me for it. But I declined. In that moment, I was afraid that maybe I was closing a door on the book's future. I was afraid I was being stupid. But sometimes, our gut is where God speaks. I didn't know that for a long time, but it's something I've learned in my own emotional recovery journey. In my gut, I knew. 
that the path of listening for wisdom in our emotions was for everybody. In the end, fortunately, a different agent caught the vision for the book, and she thought it was worth getting out into the world. And with her incredible support and help, we ended up finding a publisher who wanted to make the book a reality. And that is how The Wisdom of Your Heart became a real book on real shelves about 18 months ago. That was a dream come true for me. Just an incredible, humbling privilege. Well, over the months since the book came out, I have been floored by the response of the people who've read it. People have complimented my writing, which feels great. I'm a word nerd. I love writing. But way, way more importantly, they've told me how much the book has tangibly helped them. People have said they've actually seen real life change. Are you kidding me? That's an even bigger dream than me getting to have a book on a shelf, getting to help other people find a healthier, more peaceful, more meaningful life. I cannot think of anything cooler than that. And so today is a big day because today is the next step in the journey for the wisdom of your heart. Not everybody's a reader. It's hard for people like me to imagine, but I know it's true. Reading isn't easy for everyone. And honestly, having the time to sit down and read a book, that's a privilege that some people just don't have. And so I believe that an audiobook version is an important resource that's going to expand the reach of the book and help a lot more people. And today is the day that becomes a reality. The audiobook is available right now over on audible.com, on Amazon, and on iTunes. Now, if you've never used audible.com, it's amazing. I love it. I use it all the time. If you've never used it or you don't have an account, I've made a short video explaining how it works so you can set up an account and have it work really easy for you. You'll find a link to that video in the notes. Okay, now I'm going to be a salesman for two or three minutes, even though it feels really awkward and uncomfortable for me. I profoundly believe in the message and the tools in this book. I believe in it because of the fruit I've seen in my own life. I also believe in it because I have heard from so many other people who've read it and found real help. I want to share just some brief words that I have received from some of those people. These are real people, real readers, people like you that reached out to me to tell me how the book impacted them. I want to share just three. This first one is from Dennis C. He wrote, I read The Wisdom of Your Heart in 2018. God used your writing to help me heal. Due to codependency, I had shut down emotionally. Having allowed myself to feel again over the last few years, I've not always understood my own feelings. You helped me accept those feelings as part of how I'm created in God. This is a huge step in my emotional growth. Dennis, you and me both. Man. Here's another one. This is from Kim P. She wrote, I found the wisdom of your heart easy to understand and so interesting that it was hard to put down. I learned about various emotions on a deeper level or with different understanding than I had before. Kim, that's exactly what I hoped the book would do. And most surprising to me was the number of counselors and therapists who reached out to let me know that they're actually using the book in their practice, which just blows me away. Here's a note from one of them, Cindy B. As a licensed psychotherapist, the most helpful thing for me about the wisdom of your heart is having a resource for clients who are wanting to grow in their emotional health. Thank you so much. I can't even begin to express how encouraging and overwhelming hearing those words is for me. And I hope if you're on the fence about checking the book out, maybe these words might convince you. So if you like to read a physical book or an ebook, you can pick the wisdom of your heart up on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, ChristianBooks.com, pretty much any other book retailer out there. But if you prefer the audiobook, then today you can get that for the first time on Audible.com, Amazon, and iTunes. I'll put links for all of that in the notes. You can find the notes at www.markalanchelski.com forward slash TAW017 for the podcast or down below the video for the YouTube version. Look, whether you read this book or not, make sure that you are taking the time to invest in your own inner life. It is the wellspring from which every other part of your life flows, and it is the place where the Spirit of God waits to meet you. Thanks for listening. Until next time, remember, in this one present moment, you are loved, you are known, and you are not alone.